to reuse them when they are loosely coupled it is very easy to reuse them and replace them with some other component so in java how many of you are doing java here so java folks uh, you might be aware of different different components that we generally use in java world but in rails it is little difficult inside rails application this talk is mainly around view components when i join earlier i used to be a java developer when i joined rails project uh, the first question came to my mind that time it was a web application that okay is there a way to add components or to create components so that i can segment my page into different different components which are mvc in itself and which should be easy for anybody to replace component by other and the straight forward answer came to me was no there is no direct support i know that i uh, we all know rails is directly or tightly coupled with active records it is uh, it, it it has done really an amazing job at from where it was in 0.7 and where it has it has reached and soon sooner we will get 4.0 but that time immediately after the question i found there was this render component how many of you have used it so i was really i i became really happy okay there is the, there is a component stuff in rails and let's go and start use it i started using it and very soon it got deprecated and i again became sad the reason for deprecation according to rails document was do not use components to separate concerns within a single application furthermore to it it says reserve the usage of this components for those rare cases where you definitely or you are 100% sure that you have a reusability in views and mainly it talks about try to create components where it can it can be applicable across application and at the very end it says it can better be replaced by partials and filters there is something i kind of the best example of components which are which may not be view related or which may be view related are like ruby gems for java world it could be like jar how many of you use a very simple library like display tag from java it's it basically uh, it's basically at view layer so it is it is again related to it is again a component which is which allows you to easily create um, tables and columns when it comes to rails because of the convention you got a very good directory structure and it becomes very easy to find or to locate a particular view let's say if i want to go to list.html that is the list action inside my events controller i can use, i i know that it is there in the events directory which is really an awesome thing but this makes this this is better fit when application is small do because of the convention you can directly locate a view but as your application grow let's see what happens to this view directory structure let's take this example so you have a big let's say it's a landing page home page you have sidebar where different promotional sections can can appear you have then tab navigation at the top you have sections section 1 section 2 and section 3 which could be again promotional contents and could be driven by an administrator or an editor now let's try to imagine i want to develop this in a very traditional way in rails how do i do that i'll start creating controller i'll put an index action and i'll start writing code for it and in views i'll start creating all these separate separate partials when i say partials for java world it is very similar to what you do for your simple jsp include you can map it it's not direct mapping but it is 
it is very much similar to that. I was having a conversation with uh, Nick, uh, who is creator of Sales and Apotomo, which is our main topic. Um, and over email, he said um, it, it would be nice to show some real life example or pro examples in production. Uh, community who are currently using Sales and Apotomo, they wanted to see some examples in production. So, this is something currently in production. This is from our very recent project. So, this is again a landing page. Everything is unrelated. On this page, nothing is related. So, you have a breaking news section, you have a watch live promo, you have some other promo like support us, you have an author column and then you have a middle section of shows. Nothing is related. Let me give a brief introduction about what this project is all about. This is this is basically a news. Um, it's this organization is basically an independent media, and they run one-hour show. So basically, in that one-hour show, they produce stories and headlines. And if you see that video, it is it is related to the uh, headlines and stories, which is one chunk, and all other are rela unrelated. There is another example of the same th stuff. This is a headlines page where you have a video and you have some description about this headline, let's say. But look at the right, right hand side. It's totally unrelated. So, you have some uh, stories and headlines from someday, then you have watch live and most popular. Those have no relation to the headlines page. It's not even related to related headlines. It's totally different. Now, to add on to complexity, let's say I want to show this on the headlines page immediately after the description. Is this related to headline? No, because it talks about top stories which could be driven by editors, which could be controlled by editors. Then you have a featured topics which has no relation to your headlines. Let's say as an editor, I want to promote follow DN option. When I say DN, it's, a, it's from the project Democracy Now. Let's say I want to promote this follow option so that users would come and start following on different different social platforms. Then you have, let's say, this is a tab navigation. And again, this either, let's say, editors decide, okay, for some day, I want to show featured section and later, I don't want to show featured section. Instead of that, I want to show top stories like this recent shows and the last one let's say example of speaking events speaking events could be events happening all over the place like the same rubicon we'll deep, we'll take a look at how we can implement a spe speaking event and create a view component a little later now the main problem comes when cms is used how many of you have used cms Good, great. So, let's say I want to control everything from CMS. As an editor, I want to define a layout. I want to define what should come on what part of the page. And I want a flexibility to turn it off, turn it on, or I want to replace it with some other component, which has the same CSS styling with the for the dimensions, width and height. It becomes very difficult to manage it. We fall into the same trap of creating monolithic controllers, mon monolithic page, defining one controller and then different, different, different partials. It becomes difficult to understand and to practically implement mashup. In Java world, how many of you used site mesh? In Java world, I, I really like this site mesh tool. It's a page decorating framework. It's very, it is, because of that, it becomes very easy to decorate your pages. Let's say if you want to implement something like YouTube, you have a video, related video, more from something like that. And let's say, as an editor of YouTube.com, I want to control what should appear on the related, whether related should appear or something else should appear there. Then it becomes easy 
with the help of site mesh where you can add different different page rules on the page let's say how many of you have heard segmentation by freshness it becomes easy to achieve segmentation by freshness martin has written a very good article on segmentation by freshness what it means in a very basic and in a very simple terminology let's say you have a page divided into sections let individual component own that section so that everything related to caching performance can be handled there itself rails by default gives different different caching mechanisms you have a page caching you have action caching you have fragment caching frag you can think of fragment caching when you want to cache individual parts of the page but fragment caching has a cost and the cost is first of all the code lies in the view second thing is the exp expiration is little trickier expiration of the cache cache invalidation is anyways one of the difficult jobs but fragment caching there is lot of there is there, there lot of things that you have to write let's say for expiration and you are let's say if you write sweepers sweepers need to understand okay for this particular model there are 6 7 fragments let's say if tomorrow you delete one you add two you have to go and modify those many stuff which is little tricky so how do we handle this let's consider one example only one page with unrelated section as one as i said this is again the snippet from the code base let's say i write a controller and on this page i want to show those speaking events which which we just saw how do i write it i'll just say before filter i'll try to gather data and make it available as a instance variable so that it is available in the view but should we really do this personally i use before filter only if it is i i tend to use before filter only when it is related to authentication and authorization and not for too many data gatherings unless it is really tricky and becomes very messy this was a very simple now let's add complexity what if some unrelated sections are used on all pages any guesses what we could do here very simple we all know inheritance what we do we actually take everything and put it into application controller again there is a problem in a in a in a object oriented world we say instead of inheritance go for composition but when it comes to coding when it comes to actually writing modifying we actually move it to immediately application controller and our everything works fine and we become productive but that's not that's not really the way we should think of the other way is somebody say we can create a mix in somebody say we can create a model and include it it's a composition what if there are many unrelated sections let's add a complexity here as well many unrelated sections and there are let's say many pages so there would be lot of combinations of page and its unrelated section in that case we definitely need a way to divide page into segments so that segments can be treated as mvc in itself when we do all these things when we want to write something in view what we do we start creating partials let's say if there is one unrelated section we create let's say one partial if there are many we tend to create some more partials if there are let's say lot of then we try to create some more partials again and we keep going on and then let's see what happens to our view There's so many partials so what are the options so long time back 
when Merck came into existence, uh, there was a nice gem came in like Merck parts. How many have you? How many have you used uh, Merck? Merck parts. So Merck parts was basically giving, creating a parts controller. That means one controller which was extending from abstract controller and giving all the basic functionalities. Basically, it was a wrapper on your request response session templates, whatever the abstract controller provides. Then there was a Rails part. Rails parts, I won't talk about merge of Rails and Merv. Rails part is Merv parts ported for Rails 3. And there is third, Sales and Apotomo. So let's understand what is Sales. Sales is a view component. It's a gem, it's a view component and it is a mini controller. So when I talked about, when I said page can be divided into segments, each segment can be, can be treated as cell. But word of caution, do not create unnecessary cells. Create cells only if they are unrelated, so that they can become, they can be independent and they can be reusable. Let's take an example of this. Let's try to create speaking event cell. Basically, it's nothing but an events model, which has, let's say, date and time, a URL to go to a venue, and then uh, a detail. Let's say if I've already created this, how do I, in a, in a normal way, I would say render partial, give a partial name, and pass different parameters. If I create a cell, you can replace it with saying render cell, give the name of the cell, and give the state, that means its action. You can treat self as an, a block on a page, one particular block on a page. How do I create this cell? Let's say, here I am using uh, 187 to actually generate cell. <coughs> when I say cell speaking event show, it has generators. It actually creates a directory inside app folder. So nowadays, how many of you use uh, Rails 3.1? So slide sheets, uh, slide sheets are now coming in app folder, right? Uh, in the form of let's say SCSS or SAS. So similarly, you have a you have an app folder defined as cells, and inside cell you have views associated to that cell. So when I say cell speaking events, speaking events is the name of the cell. Speaking events is the name of the cell, show is the action, and you have app cell speaking events, that is the name of the class, that means object, and then you have associated view that show.html.erb. One interesting thing, you can easily test this cell objects. Let's start with the test first, as we all like TDD or BDD. Let's say I want to return future events. In a very simple way, I'll create two events and I'll try to assert on event. It looks exactly similar to your controller. There is hardly any difference that you would find out. Let's use, uh, it has self test case, which actually makes it easier to write test cases for self. Here I am just verifying the instance variable and doing an assert equal, but you could also verify the HTML getting generated out of it. This is an object, speaking event cell, which stays in app cells. You have a show, action, basically it says find upcoming, try to look at the events and does the rendering. You will notice something like head. There is a little problem currently in sales and apotomo related to CSS and JavaScript. How and where do we include CSS and JavaScript? In a better practice, in a, in a, in a very, if you follow all good practices, JavaScript 
where should be a JavaScript at the bottom of the page, right? But with this, you have to get the, you have to find little bit workaround to actually put JavaScript at the end, at the very end. But if you think cell as an indep independent block, you can create an another state, let's say call head, and you can put all the CSS and JavaScript associated to the cell itself. In any parent view, you just say render cell, speaking events and show. Render cell is the name of the cell, show is the action and you get a nice looking speaking events. When Yehuda wrote an article on Merv parts, he, he mentioned that, okay, they, there was something like render component which was heavyweight and not really used by many developers. They cut that off, but still we need lightweight component. And further to that, he was saying, we need lightweight component first so that it can be, it can replace partials and filters. Second thing is, it can understand the context, current context. When I say current context, it can understand what controller is the request is coming from. When I say what controller, let's say if I am on welcome controller and I want to show this speaking events there, then my cell understand, cell understand that the request is coming from welcome controller. How? It may, it actually takes a controller variable inside it. It's like a dependency. And because of that, your session request and params are easily available in cell. But as a practice, we should try to avoid using and directly not to, we should try to avoid using all those things and try to make it little independent and pass explicit parameters to cell. So when I say, let's say I want to show only one particular event, I could say show and pass, the, pass either event ID or event title and let cell do the job of actual finding the title, uh, actual finding the event. The other important aspect when I was talking about segmentation by freshness, a page divided into multiple segments, each segment can cache itself, let's say for some point, some, some particular duration, so that cache invalidation happens directly. So there is a nice DSL like cache, you have a state and you can easily specify how much time do you want that cache to be available and then it will expire it immediately after the duration. There is another variation to it. Let's assume that I'm showing all the speaking events and instead of caching the entire output of the cell, I want to cache individual events. Let's say if some, let's say if editors has, you know, removed one of the event, Instead of caching the entire cell, what I could do, I could easily say cache, instead of show, I need to create another action which would accept only one event. And just here in the cache, I could just say the, if you look at the do block, it accepts two parameters like cell and the item. The item could be the, the object. It could be a single node or whatever you want to actually uh, customize the caching for. Let's assume that it is a single event and in the cache block, in the do block, you could specify, you could try to return what cache key you want to use for that particular node. If it is no, if it is, if it is event, then it could be event.id or you could pro provide some hash or you could generate a key for it. There is another variation like you have an expiration in sweepers. The expiration is pretty straightforward, expires cell state. Cell caching, because of cell caching, fragments are gone. But internally it is a fragment. Even if you want to cache fragments of a fragment, as an ex example I have just given, that is also possible. I even instead of expire cell state, you could also expire fragment by giving the directly URL. 
the path that would expire the fragment because cell caching is internally is a fragment caching but the overhead of the maintaining fragment caches is taken over interestingly cells can be nested it supports view inheritance now rails has inheritance view uh, inheritance and one interesting problem how many of you have faced double renderer error yes there is no double renderer error it is nested it is view inheritance you can call render as many times as possible it won't throw double renderer error to you cell it is very good when you want to create view components which are not interactive but when because of the reach client reach internet applications everybody is moving towards web 2.0 3.0 etc then you have to have some kind of interactivity in these components so cells plus interactivity is called apotomo it is based on cells it is again a gem and it uses javascript it's very similar to rjs but it does not have that much of code it is javascript agnostic all the things have have been moved into gem so you don't really need to worry about what is being used whether it is jquery prototype it's all there persistent reusable independent and events actually events might create misunderstanding it is actually it supports event driven model it's not events it supports event driven model when i say persistent we'll talk about the examples then i'll give the clarity on all these things i'm pretty sure reusable and independent are clear by itself these are the examples where you could go for apotomo you have dashboards dashboards again have different different sections which actually keeps refreshing themselves you might have seen the spinning when you do ajax calls you might have added some spin spinner and you might see spinning there then you have image galleries when i talked about persistent image galleries could be an example let's say you have loads of images as thumbnails and as as you click on a thumbnail you show a bigger size image and some attributes and on the same page let's say you have an upload form where you could upload you know n number of images simultaneously so the persistent you know putting images or if you are using maybe paper clip putting image metadata in the table can be done by the cell itself and if you think uh, sorry apotomo itself if you think apotomo that way then it is easier to actually create reusable components reusable view interactivity components across application let's say i want to use the similar functionality like thumbnail because thumbnail could be generic then tab panels could be generic and that could go and that could be there in all the applications let's try to look at this simple example this is the most amazing page i have ever written it has one form only two uh, list items so you have a form you have a listing and you have a count how do we do that in apotomo as i said it is a cell based i'll quickly go through generators it's very similar to cell you have generators available the interesting part is there are two widgets i am going to create here one is note listing and one is note form two separate widgets just to understand events let's say i am creating a note form i have a notes widget where i am just getting all the notes this is a basic uh, view for it where i am just collecting all the titles for it and this is a note form where you have you just have a text box and a create block this is important in the controller you have to have a has widget entry where you could put the entire widget tree out here 
you can actually move this outside and create your own widget tree and just use the reference over here as a family name because widget trees are attached to a root which is a hang, which, which is a topmost node and you can have different different families inside it like it you, you could have a tab related stuff you could have a comment related stuff you could have a thumbnail uh, gallery related stuff and simple index.html you have a render widgets it just uses the id <coughs> it just uses the id which have been defined under has widgets block nothing else you just need to know the id which would be your div id that's the only thing you need to do and if you run this application which is available on github you would see this particular entry now let's go through very quick stuff let's say if you want to create a note and update listing and counter and filter notes on typing both the approaches i have just added a url to the existing form url for event submit and url for event typing as i type i need to say submit an event this is a basic javascript block this is very simple stuff i have written one is from form submit one is for key up this is the change response to event submit with update so whenever there is a submit event happening from client side on the server side it would respond with an update state and what does an update do it would create a new node and trigger a new node event when the new node event is triggered it would actually it actually needs to update note listing right so how do i do that in the notes widget i would do again respond to event the event name and what callback do i need to do that is update and it would actually replace the existing state of the display action that would it, it would again fetch all the notes and render re render it the similar thing goes for the typing this is the important stuff the event bubbling happens from one widget to another till the root there is another provision from where you can pass an event directly from widget 1.1 let's say to widget 2.1 that means you can pass an events between two different widgets that is also possible for um, in production examples which are currently live you can go to uh, democracynow.org and uh, which has i would say 75% of um, you know cells which are unrelated but there is still a scope of adding more and more cells that's it i have for this talk thank you is there any question thanks uh, i have uh, two things one is doubt and one is question uh, so uh, the cells caching uh, that you just told uh, it's a fragment caching right it's so is it uh, really helpful uh, in the distributed system having multiple servers distributed systems having multiple servers so as long as long as you maintain your cache at one main store at one store it won't have an impact so the thing is even if you don't use this fragment caching and if you use any other caching as long as your store is maintained at one particular location if you don't replica it you know if you replicate there then in that case you have to manage the replication if the replication is directly generated with let's say for example a kind of relation like master and slave uh, then it would be uh, but that that support has to be given by tool itself for example even if it is a distributed or a single application if you use one store let's say if you use uh, memcache for example to put all your you know cache over there and if all the system related to this talks to one store then you can get get that cell caching is something different from map cache right cell caching is nothing but internally it is a fragment cache but for fragment cache you can define a store which is there in the which is you can define in your configurations like either development.rb or in rails you have different different configuration based on different different environments so you have development staging test and production there you can store there you can define your main store it could be cache store it could be a memory it could be a uh, memcache something like that uh, one more thing is uh, uh, you just mentioned that uh, in new thing uh, the double rendering error is like uh, like 
does it bother if uh, we use double rendering thing so does it uh, meaning that uh, it like tends to uh, in in case that uh, wrong thing is rendered without notifying something or like as of now what what happens is it notifies that double rendering is not possible like someone has rendered and someone has redirected it it just notifies which will not happen uh, right which will not happen so in that case uh, like without notification it should happen that the thing uh, like go to the wrong thing uh, like without notification can you please repeat in double rendering what happens that if if i write two renders like one render and one redirect, redirect it will say that this is not it will give you it will give you an exception it will give you error it, it will give an error so meaning i want to render something by mistake i have written redirect somewhere okay like i haven't noticed that it should be in some condition but some condition is not getting raised and it is happening like both both of the things will execute in that case the render will like redirect the next statement will will take the priority right yes so it will be displayed without notification to the like to me yes so in that case uh, as i as i wrote that there uh, the problem with the problem with let's say if you do if you try to do redirect okay and if you have render after that um, in even if you don't use it there are two ways i think in rails uh, 3.x um, that case is not there but in rails at least in uh, rails uh, 2.3.14 unless and until you write an if block where you se segregate out the redirects and renders it won't have a problem but after one render after another render after another render it won't cause any issue yeah one question where is the Sorry. so um, the sales and apatom is anyways on the github the example is on uh, github hpathan should i yeah but to install this as a gem where's do we just do gem install yeah yeah it's on ruby gems apatomo so it's just gem install apatomo yes gem install apatomo and where's the code for that where's that gem is that so, on github so the, so the code is available on the uh, github but it is also available on the ruby gems and where is it on github that's what i'm trying to ask so uh, on the github it is under apatomic apatonic username oh okay good thanks so apatonic is a pet name for uh, the creator like uh, uh, whose name is uh, nick shatter yeah uh, darshan yeah thanks for the talk uh, one question uh, i come from mainly the java background i'm a java developer so uh, i correct me if i'm wrong but uh, supporto mind sells is uh, what portlets is in the probably in the java world so i mean uh, over the years uh, people were very excited about portals and portlets now they have realized it's making their life very easy i mean all the pages have become very heavy and all that stuff so do you have you seen uh, any kind of uh, similar experience when it comes to a performance self uh, sells when you're using this uh, in a page which is very rich in functionality a lot of components uh, is there any performance or any other non functional constraint or drawback of uh, this one? no um So to be honest with you, uh, experiment with Apatomo, but sales we haven't faced a problem. Nothing. Can I initiate uh, expiry time of the sales from the server side? You can. Can I uh, initiate expiry time of sales from the server side? Yes. So you have to specify if you want to cache a part, cache a cell for a given duration, then that expiry time you have to specify in the your cell block in the cell object. All the cells are rendered in, inside one particular place, right? it's in one uh, request flow yes it depends on your application whether you want to whether you are going to render all the cells on one page or you want only some cells on this page and the other remaining cells on the other page i am just talking about the double render you just mentioned that uh, in cells you uh, you are not going to get double render error because it's not going to be Yeah, as all cells are rendered in uh, one particular request flow. Every cell is an object which uses a control in its within it. So you never get a double render error. 
Um, so I, I did not hear a comparison with uh, an alternative would be uh, for widget. Uh, sorry, I can go ahead, right? Okay, sorry. Uh, so the al an alternative would be to have um, um, segmentation by frag uh, seg segmentation by freshness implemented in a way where your widgets are driven from the client side and each of them just hit a controller starting from the browser itself. Um, whereas this is all probably server side in one shot. So how do you compare these two approaches of one server side uh, re response versus a chatty application? Yeah, um, very good question. The, so the, the, the problem I saw with the first one uh, was, let's say I want to show n number of unrelated items on page load. In that case, what do I do? I try to create, I try to send those many Ajax requests on the page load itself. And if it is going to take time, then I might see spinners all over the, all over the page, at least for let's say there are five unrelated sections, uh, then immediately you would see five, um, you know, spinners for Ajax calls. And that could, and personally I feel that we should try to avoid and move it to one page load and have segmentation by freshness mostly on the server side. Uh, we'll take one last question before we wrap up. Yeah. Uh, it might sound silly, but can you just redefine uh, what the issue was with partials uh, and why we're using cells instead of just the usual partial thing? It's an, cell is an object oriented replacement for partials. So when you use partials... What, what, is, the, what is the challenge with partials that, I mean here I can see that it's making stuff a bit more complicated and it's something new and that has baggage that comes with it. So we have partials, we're all used to it, um, and you have that, you can render a partial directly with the instance variable, and you have simple stuff like that, and you can use decorators to kind of give you, and delegate those getters, so, you know, stuff we're familiar with, so what did, why, why, why cells, what's wrong with partials? So it's the same thing, whether you want to opt, whether you want to go for individual partials, you have seen the, so the you have to write the HTML code somewhere. I mean, you can't escape that. So yes. Whether it's an underscore whatever file or a cell file, the code has to be there. Then in that case... Uh, so what, what problem are we solving? So the problem is your code your code gets messier. Like can you define... So let's say for example, let's say for five unrelated sections on your one page, okay. how are you going to write, let's say, before filter? So are we, are we assuming... I mean, I'm not talking about before filters here because the way I'd collect... The data would be using, you know, conditional sort of decorating. It wouldn't be before filters because even I use before filters for like what you said. But my point is, if you have a lot of unrelated sections and a lot of partials, you'd use template inheritance and share them, and that code has to be written somewhere. So you're not escaping, you know, writing that code. Getting those partials, you have that render with an at instance variable, which just by convention finds the partial. So you have these two things. As long as that instance variable is available in the controller you're looking for. Why do we need to add in this complexity? So is it making, I mean, because I don't know about caching that much, because if there's a caching advantage, then completely sold, but apart from that, I... So forget about caching, and I won't even defend object-oriented. Let's take an example where you want to show five unrelated sections and should be driven by editors. Let's say I want to show, I want to show a video, and as an editor, I want to, today I want to show related images or related videos for this particular video. In that case, I would create a related block, related cell. Right, uh, can I just stop you right there? Can we start from the view? Your view would have some conditional logic which will call render or whatever, right? I mean, no. Why would so when so when it how, is? How does I mean, like say I have a X Y Z controller and there are five hundred. There is a main body and there are five unrelated sections in that controller. Uh, in the view for that controller, there have to there has to be you'd have to have a way perhaps of making sure the HTML code gets in that view, right? I mean, you'd write render some cell yeah. name, whereas say I'd write render some partial name. Mm -hmm. You'd need to do that, right? I mean, there's but, no escaping that. But your uh, editors would... Uh, can I interrupt you guys for a second? Uh, we're just out of time, so maybe you guys could take this uh, we, We'll talk about this later. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, sure. All right. So the next talk in this track is going to...